So, non-inverting op-amp with negative feedback configuration. So, this is the non-inverting op-amp just before what we had seen. This is the non-inverting op-amp, right? So, we are giving the input to here. So, what I am doing here now, we know in the operational amplifier, input impedance or the input resistance is very high, but the opposite in the output. The output impedance or the output resistance is almost zero, nothing. There is no output resistance. So this is one of the important property or characteristic of the operational amplifier uh, that we can use it here now. So now we can see one uh, circuit. This circuit is same as the non-inverting operational amplifier, right? I just make small changes. What changes I did? I took out the grounding here instead i don't have the input resistor and i don't have the output resistor sorry feedback resistor and i still take this fraction of output i am feeding back to this negative input terminal i am applying the input signal to this positive input terminal of course this uh, always need a phase, phase and neutral neutral means what there is a ground okay so um this is uh, let's see the signal apply what is happening now so we know already this is the node is called vx so here what is the value of this vx vx is going to be equal to v out so at this node voltage potential vx is equal to v out so now whenever we have a negative feedback then there will be a virtual short between these two input terminals. So that is the thumbs of rule. So you should always remember whenever we have a negative feedback, there's a virtual short between this terminal and this terminal. So whatever the voltage appear in one terminal, the same voltage will appear in the other terminal. Okay. So it means whatever voltage uh, applied to this non-inverting input terminal, uh, the same voltage will apply at the output because this output will apply here. So for example, we will see some numbers so you will understand. I apply one volt. So this one volt is coming here at the output. The same one volt is appearing here as well. So here just we are using this as a voltage follower. So whatever the voltage you apply to this input, it will appear the same voltage. You see here, there is no amplification. So whatever the voltage you apply here, the same voltage will apply uh, appear in this output terminal. So that is why we call it, the output is following the input. You know, output is following the input. That is why it's called voltage follower. So V in is equal to V out or V out is equal to V in. So this is the special property of this circuit. So I did not do anything big different uh, circuit construction here. I just removed this RF and R1 and I just still have the feedback and I don't have the ground here. So then this is what happening. So I apply whatever the input voltage, the same voltage here, this voltage and this voltage is equal. Don't ask me, is it going to be the VD is it going to be V1 minus one, V1 minus V2 and it's going to be zero or not. No, that is not going to happen here. That is the uh, special property of this uh, voltage follower circuit, because here we are not having any grounded. So whatever the voltage you apply, that will appear in this output. So output will follow the input voltage. So we call this as a voltage follower. Um, we are achieving this mainly because of these characteristics, because the input impedance is very high in this operational amplifier. This is the input impedance. And here the output impedance is almost zero. So this voltage follower is very useful uh, when we use in practical circuit constructions. I will explain that uh, maybe when we talk about the filter design 
you know, we have to see the low pass filter, high pass filter, band pass filter, and so on. So the filter design, we are going to use this voltage follower. So the voltage follower will uh, isolate two circuits, which having loading effect problems. So we will see those things uh, later in the future lecture, but you should know this is called voltage follower circuit. And this is one of the applications from operational amplifier. Okay, so now we will move on the next, move to the next slide. Uh, so non-inverting operational amplifier with negative feedback configuration, again, uh, non-inverting, we are applying to this non-inverting input and then negative feedback. Okay, because of these two characteristics, this circuit configuration is also known as buffer circuit. So the same voltage follower, what we had seen in this slide, I just use between two circuits. So I take the output of the circuit one, applying as an input to this voltage follower. So what will happen here? So for example, this circuit is giving output maybe five volt. So I am feeding this, uh, this five volt as an input to this op amp. The same five volt will appear here exactly. So there will be no reduction. So this five volt will appear here because it will follow the input. This five volt will be applied to this circuit two as an input. Why I am doing this? If I direct, I can directly apply, right? I can directly take this five volt and apply to this circuit. Here we cannot do that in some situations we have the loading problem. There will be an impedance mismatching problem. So we cannot really apply uh, the output of one circuit directly to the other circuit as the input. So in that kind of situations, we have to isolate. We have to isolate these two circuits. So in that case, we need some component in between. So that is what the voltage follower. So here the voltage follower is acting as a buffer. So whatever the, uh, the so it avoid the uh, loading effect problem and the impedance mismatching problem, this component. Okay, so this is also one of the important applications of this op amp. So we can isolate two different circuits and at the same time, we can ensure that whatever voltage that is appearing at the output of one circuit, whatever the voltage appearing at the output of one circuit, that will appear at the input of another circuit without any impedance mismatch problem or loading effect problems. Okay, so that's what I said, low input impedance. If you have a low input impedance, then this circuit will consider the circuit two as a load. It will not consider as a, another circuit. So that is why uh, we have this voltage follower or the buffer in between. We had seen the operational amplifier with open loop configuration, it means there was no feedback. And we know the formula for V out is equal to VD multiplied by V1, uh, so that is the V1 minus V2 uh, multiplied by A. Uh, okay, so, and this VD is equal to V1 minus V2. So you don't need to have VD all the time. Uh, you can apply voltage either V1 or V2, but if you apply both, then it will take the difference between V1 and V2 that is called VD, and we are applying to the input terminals. So in that case, we can call the operational amplifier as a differential amplifier. We call this as a differential amplifier because the operational amplifier is amplifying the difference between these two input voltages, right? So here we have the input terminal one and input terminal two, uh, this V1 and this is V2. This is very important. This is a positive terminal and this is a negative terminal. And we have the voltage, biasing voltages, plus V, minus V, and we have the V out. So this amplifier, if we have the gain A. So this amplifier is amplifying the difference between these two input voltages at the output with respect to the gain. So that is why we call this as a differential amplifier. When we apply voltage to these two terminals. Remember the differential amplifier, we can also use as a comparator. So I told you an example, how can we measure the temperature using the sensor and how it works. V1 is greater than V2 or V1 is less than V2 or V1 is equal to V2. So we can use as a comparator 
or we can use as a differentiator, uh, differential amplifier, or we can use as a voltage follower or buffer. So when we talk about the voltage follower or buffer, we definitely need the feedback. Uh, we so open loop configuration, you are very clear about, I think. And the characteristics, we had seen the characteristics of ideal operational amplifier. We saw infinity, 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 all the parameters are almost infinity. But in practical operational amplifier, it's not like that. It has certain value. It can be maybe 75 ohms, 10 kilo ohms, and so on. So that is the difference between ideal operational amplifier and practical operational amplifier. So the characteristics, uh, characteristics we had seen, and of course we had seen the voltage transfer curve uh, whenever you apply the input voltage after certain point, even though you increase the input voltage, the output will not increase like this. The output will stop at this point. So it will got saturated. Similarly, the negative side also the same. It will reach after a certain point, uh, input voltage. This is the input voltage. And uh, this is the output voltage, the y-axis. So even though you increase the input voltage further, the output will get saturated. So this is minus Vsat, and this is plus Vsat. So to avoid this problem, we wanted to control the gain and operate the operational amplifier in this linear region. Then we moved to this closed loop. Closed loop, we have two types of uh, uh, feedbacks. One is positive feedback and negative feedback. Positive feedback, we almost never use. We use negative feedback. In the negative feedback, there are two types. That is the inverting operational amplifier. Another one is called non-inverting operational amplifier. And we saw the formula for gain. V out is, uh, sorry, V out divided by V in, that is equal to A. A is equal to one plus RF divided by R1. Sorry, this is just uh, making a mess. So this is the formula for non-inverting operational amplifier. And the inverting operational amplifier, what is the gain formula? V out by V in is equal to A. So A is equal to minus RF divided by R1. This is the input resistor and this is the feedback resistor. So you should know the difference uh, between in inverting operational amplifier and non-inverting operational amplifier. And you should know or you should remember the formula for the gain of this inverting configuration and you should remember the formula for non-inverting configuration this is the gain formula so by changing this rf value and r1 value you can change the a value when you change the a value automatically the output voltage will also change okay, so that is all uh, for uh, this operational amplifier basic configurations open loop configurations and closed loop configurations. Uh, now next we are going to see the applications of operational amplifiers.